One of the biggest questions I get every week is how can somebody train with me personally? Now obviously you don't all live near London, Strathroy, Ontario, Sarnia area. But for years I've been doing something called the e-mentor where people live in remote places, could be Australia, who I deal with goalies there frequently, Russia, all over the place. So I developed the e-mentor program to train goalies worldwide. Now I originally started mentor training goaltenders back in 1994 and I originated mentor training. Now what I want to try to do is make this available for you at home if you want to train with me personally. It's a personal relationship with your own NHL goalie coach, me. I watch your video clips, I talk to you frequently, we manage your off ice game, we manage your nutrition, we manage your consistent preparation, your ability to deliver peak performances. Now obviously this isn't cheap. You want to work with an NHL goalie coach, it could cost you some dollars. But if you want to work with me personally, the eMentor program could be for you. So reach out, send me an email, info at futurepro.com and we can discuss, see if it fits your budget and if it's something that can help you. Now you can see on the website all the goaltenders that I've coached that have went on to the NHL, college and juniors. The next one could be you. Well, how'd you like my juggling, clown, fitness type people? A great message I want to get out to you. We have to have training with purpose, not circus. Now lately, like there's been over the years, different training things that can help you become a better goalie. Juggling can help with your hand-eye for sure and your focus and your concentration. VR goggles, I'm sure they work at some level. But here's what I want to tell you. Ed Belfour never played with any of that stuff and he's one of the winningest goalies in the history of the NHL. He worked on the hard stuff. He worked on his fitness, his sprinting, weightlifting, anaerobic capacity, all that stuff that goes into being a great goaltender. And the reason why this is crucial is not that I hate those other things, not that I think they're all clown type activities, I think there's a difference in our thinking. We have to be proportionally training and what that means is the biggest part of your job doesn't involve that. Everybody thinks, and it's a myth, that goaltending is about reflexes, hand-eye, and all that. Yes, it's a crucial area, for sure, 100%. However, on the NHL, in the NHL, there's 20 pucks on net. Only about 10% of them give you actual time to track the puck, walk it in. See, I said the word tracking. Watch it in, make the save. So the biggest part of your job isn't that little bit. And here's where I have a concern and a worry about all these little devices. The kids are humans. They'll do the fun stuff. They'll do the video game stuff. They'll do the VR goggles, the jog, jogging, the 3D glasses. They'll do all that stuff because it's fun. Now that's fixing a tiny part of the game if that stuff actually works. And the bigger core of their game is not getting addressed. So don't get me wrong. I'm not the old Grinch poo-pooing all this technology, get off my lawn, screaming at clouds type of guy. That's not me. I'm just telling you what I know. The biggest requirement in the NHL has nothing to do with reflexes. It's positioning, it's conditioning, it's explosive dynamic things that you have to train. That's the biggest part of your job. So get to work on the hard stuff. And remember, dessert comes after dinner. Do the dinner, all the hard stuff, get the dessert later if you want to spend some time playing with your VR goggles. All right, in our first clip here, we've got a rush chance on Josh, who's playing senior hockey here. Whenever we do these video analysis, I like to watch the clip twice at normal speed. So here's the second time through. It's a line rush, the shot off the wing. And then I like to slow it down to sort of assess what's happening in the neutral zone. So when he taps off to step off, he can see that up in the blue line area, there's nobody really available except for this guy in the wing. So he's definitely a shooter here unless he curls up and does something else. But for me, he's out on the white ice. He's not a six foot seven kid, so he grabs great depth, tries to get his feet set, and follows the puck well off his blocker. So great sequence there, great depth. 
In this second clip here, we got a nice gut trap. We're gonna look at some rebound control on midline shots. Little zone setup, face off. The puck gets turned over to the point. The puck comes in, guy waving at the aerial tip. Josh makes a kipper catch, stays closed, seals it up. Pretty routine save, but this would have caused a lot of problems if he let it get off his jersey, off the primary touch. So as goaltenders, here's what we gotta do. We gotta make sure wherever possible, we're a primary touch guy. The first touch, it stays up on us. Not gonna be perfect, but that's what we wanna try to do wherever possible. This next clip here, I see a lot of kids doing this, older kids, beer league guys do this too. When you got an offensive player in a zone setup come near your net, you don't need to stand up in front of him or when he sets up behind the net, you don't need to be putting your gloves up in this guy's face. It doesn't really do anything and it causes unnecessary animosity for zero benefit. And at the end of the day here, it actually causes a negative because this kid here decides not to pursue behind the net. He decides just to get back into the play, help be in a better defensive support position. So Josh moving up there caused the guy to get back into the play. Here we got a three on two, which is a rush chance. And we want to see how well Josh reads this play, especially the neutral zone. So let's watch the clip a couple times and we'll see what he does. It's a huge save, guy shooting from the slot. Um, we've got a little bit of back pressure, but let's watch in the slow motion and really assess the neutral zone here. So he taps off, he steps out to the top of the crease. We've got a three on two with limited back pressure. The takeaway from this, is Josh isn't sliding around in his butterfly. He pushes back to the middle. A little bit of a late jump on it, but he's on his edges, and as he releases it, his feet are set, follows the puck off his body, repositions back to the post. Excellent job. All right, here we got another rush chance. Here we use the reactionary RVH. It's not a default early position. Let's watch a clip a couple times when this guy just dangles and walks that defenseman. Josh bails the team out with some solid reactionary RVH play. So basically you look back in the neutral zone, here's what you got. You got a three on three, everybody should be matching up with their man, there's zero back pressure. I don't think Josh should be out there floating in the white, I just would set my feet at the top of the crease. But the winger walks the D, Josh still holds his edges, still holds his edges, patient and upon release, gets in the RVH and seals up that short side very well. Great job, Josh. Quarterbacking the game. You're not a quarterback, you're a goalie. However, great goalies are great quarterbacks, and that means you manage the clock like a great quarterback. Here, Josh grabs a long dump in, makes the decision to hold for a whistle. Now the reason why this is so important is because sometimes your team's on the receiving end of bad momentum, you need to manage the clock. Do we keep the play going or do we need to get these butt heads off the ice? Sometimes your worst defensemen are on the ice and you need to get them off the ice. Here at clip number seven, we're gonna talk about how you properly use the overlap on a poor angle drive. Now this causes NHL goalies massive headaches because they can't figure this out. This isn't rocket appliances. He clears the D and shoots from a very poor angle and Josh uses the overlap. Now if you look here, we've got a guy wide being held out there by the D, out in a high slot, there's no other options, there's absolutely no reason to be in the RVH. This is a simple play, just overlap slightly, don't over challenge and make your save. 